How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're looking at a fall photo that I have uh, from a few weeks ago that I captured here in northern Utah and kind of down in the Provo area uh, if you're familiar and we have a big drone pano that we're going to be putting together today. So we're going to go through uh, this process of stitching everything in Lightroom and doing some of our basic uh, exposure edits and then we're going to take it into Photoshop and do a little bit of dodging and burning and, and some, some post-processing in, in Photoshop. So let's jump right into the computer and get started. So as you can see, we have uh, this first image here. And if you look down to the bottom of our screen, we've got these four images right here. So the first thing that we're going to do is get these all stitched together. So I'm going to highlight. I'm going to click on our first image here, which is the, the bottom of our frame. And I'm going to hold down shift and then click on this last one, which is the top of our frame. You can see in the uh, in the top left corner there. And we're going to come up to our photo tab, hit photo merge and panorama. And we're going to let it do its thing. Let it load that pano. And then we're going to look at some of our options here. Hey, that one's not good. That one's really not good. That's a little bit better. Nope. Okay, so I think we're gonna go with this. We're gonna put on the uh, cylindrical projection and then we're gonna make sure our boundary warp is at 100 because if it's not, it kind of warps everything kind of like a rainbow and we don't want to we don't want to do that it just kind of looks weird it looks like we're kind of looking at a uh, one of those 360 um 360 cams make sure our boundary warp is at 100 and that gives us a, a slightly flatter uh horizon we can even adjust that in post if we need to but i kind of like how this looks actually let's check out perspective that's not bad Um, maybe we'll stick with perspective. I, I do like perspective quite a bit. So I like that perspective isn't so rounded at the top. So we'll do perspective and I think we'll probably keep this, keep the boundary warp down on this one. Make sure auto crop is on auto cropping because when it's, when it's doing these, uh, panos and when it's merging everything it kind of warps stuff and so if you have auto crop on it'll crop it all that white and then we'll hit merge and we'll let it let it merge that'll take just a minute all right so we have our merged pano right here so now what we're going to do it already did some auto adjustments for us so we're just gonna kind of go from from where it from where it left us off at. So I'm gonna drop my exposure down just a little bit, just because we're looking a little bright up at the top. And I want to see if this is something about this didn't look very sharp. I mean, it is a drone photo, but uh, okay, never mind. It looks good. Something was looking a little a little off about it. So okay, I like that general exposure up there. Bring up our shadows just a little bit. And to keep our highlights down and drop that. So it blocks a little bit. I'm gonna kind of maybe I'll boost the clarity just slightly. And then I'm gonna come down here to the color tab. I'm gonna pull some of these blues out. And yeah, that's looking better. It just looks way too HDR if we have these heavy blues like that so we're gonna pull the saturation down on some of those blues I think we'll leave the luminance um, I think that's fine right there yeah let's play some of the the orange and yellow tones I'm gonna pull some of these up a little bit um, I don't know about that yellow the red just a little bit maybe add slight saturation we don't want to overdo it we don't want to be the, we don't want to be one of those guys um, might warm up these greens just a little bit, add a little yellow to that green hue, and nope, nope, and nope, don't like that at all. 
Okay, so this actually gives me a pretty good starting spot to pull this into Lightroom. Or excuse me, pull this into Photoshop and, and do a bunch of dodging and burning there. So we'll do all of our masks and everything in, in Photoshop. So we're going to Command E and it's going to pull us over into Photoshop. We'll let that boot up. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. So first thing that I always like to do is I like to create a couple duplicates of this layer and that's just hitting con or, uh, Command J. So I have a my background layer and I have a base layer here that I'm going to use for all of my landscape and then I have a layer that I'm going to use for the sky. So first thing I'm going to do is select my sky, go down here, sky. Okay, that looks like it did a pretty good job. And select the mask. One thing that is nice about not having any clouds in the sky is that it do typically does a pretty good job at masking out. So, all right, output layer mask, hit OK. Okay, so now we have a mask on our sky. So first thing that I want to do is I'm gonna do a curves adjustment on this bottom layer. Whoa, what is it doing? Uh, we're gonna hit uh, Control Z or Command Z, undo that. Duplicated it for some reason. So I'm hitting Option, and then I am connecting that adjustment layer to my bottom layer. Okay, so now this curves layer is only gonna affect that uh, that bottom layer. I'm just gonna kind of mess with this just a little bit. Um, don't want to get too much. Actually, I might get this up slightly. Okay, I'm gonna do a levels. And this is just, I'm gonna kind of do a targeted um, adjustment here and I'm gonna try to bring up some of the exposure of this more shadowy area. Just like that. I'm gonna bring some of those darks in just a little bit again. Nope, I wanna do that. Okay, I'm gonna invert this, Command-I, and then I'm going to make sure my brush is on white, turn my opacity up. And then I'm going to just kind of paint in that levels adjustment. Okay, before, after, before, after. Very slight, very subtle. Cool, I actually really like that. Okay, so now I'm going to do some dodging and burning. So I'm going to create a layer here. Make sure that I hit option and connect that. And I want my blend mode to be on overlay because we're going to do some some bright highlight spots and make sure my brush is set to this warm peachy color turn my opacity down to probably about 15 make sure that my okay hardness is at zero percent it's just how i like to have it and we're going to start hitting targeting some of these brighter areas actually i might do i want to no not yet okay Just hitting some of these brighter areas. Just brightening up what's already what's already pretty bright. So we're doing we're being kind of kind of loose with this, not being super targeted. We'll do another targeted um, adjustment here in a minute. I'm gonna hit some of these uh, sections right here. Just kind of bring up a little bit more of these this area where all these trees are. Ridge. Mainly trying to target these spots where that sun is hitting. And then maybe some of these red spots too, try to pop out. Pull out a little bit more of that red. Maybe some of this, um, these canyon walls here. Before, after, before, after. I think that's cool. I like that. So, you know what? That we might not be. This may be a fairly simple edit. We may not have too much to do. So, 
Let's see. We're gonna do a burn layer. Normal, we're gonna go to soft light, make sure our brush is set to black. And we'll come down and we'll just hit some of these. We don't wanna do anything too crazy just because realistically we're not gonna have that many dark spots with um, some of this mountain being so far away. So we're just going to darken a little, a little bit here and there just to kinda create a little bit of contrast, a little bit of texture. Little bits and pieces, nothing crazy. Okay, so we'll do it before, after, before, after. Very, very subtle. Nothing, nothing real crazy with that. Um, let's do, I really want to try to bring out some of these, some of these reds that are in here. So let's do a vibrancy mask or adjustment. And let's see if we can, this might, I, I don't want to do too much. I want this to be really targeted. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll do that. I'm gonna Command I, invert this, and I'm gonna paint in um, the areas that I want that vibrancy to hit. So which is gonna be mainly right here in this kind of shadowy area. Because there's all these red trees in here, but you can't see them because of the way that because of the way that the the drone is handling those shadows. So, but I don't want to do anything too crazy. I don't want this to actually look like a pile of skittles. So even though it, it in certain light it does, but let's see. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, so we have before, after, before, after. There's really not not much that's that's done on that. It's very, it's so subtle you barely even notice it. It's almost pointless to do that for being really honest. But um, let's see. I want to try one more thing for that for that uh, those shadow areas. Do another curves layer here. Oh, this will probably do it right here. All right, we're gonna invert that in here and we're going to paint that in. Actually gonna turn our flow up just a little bit just to speed up this process. section just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, we got some weird pinks in there now that we gotta we gotta deal with, but we're not gonna do that just yet. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna do a selective color adjustment. I'm just gonna play with some of these colors real quick. So where do those magentas go? Magentas. Uh, let's turn those warmer. There we go. Okay, so right now we're targeting these more peachy colors, or not peachy, we're these more like pinky colors. So we're turning them, we're taking our we're taking that color, that kind of magenta color, and we're um, Infusing more yellow into those and making it making those a lot warmer um, And then just a little bit more white just to bring them up just a little bit uh, Maybe we'll tone down the magenta um, I actually don't know if I like that Maybe them cyan I'm just gonna make them pink again uh, kind of reddish. Okay. I think that's good right there Yeah, I think I like that I like that so yeah, not as pink which I you don't see pink trees in real life. So that's kind of the key with all this is it's like, what do you see in real life? You know, just keeping in mind, at least, you know, if that's what your your style is, if you're looking to, to get a photo that's, that's more true to life or an edit that's more true to life, just think about, you know, little things like that. Like you don't see pink trees in real life. So 
Okay, well that is looking good. I don't know that we're gonna do too much to the uh, sky. Maybe just like, oops, let me attach that. There we go. Uh, maybe, I don't know, because then we're kind of blowing it out. So I think maybe we'll just keep it like that. Just a slight curves adjustment for after. Nothing too crazy. Now we're getting into the uh, uh, the styling um, area of the edit where I'm going to start stylizing this. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do a normal uh, layer here and I'm going to take my brush, make it as big as I can and turn the opacity down. We'll do 12% flow down and I'm going to do just some slight hazing of this background a little bit. It's taking a second to catch up. Very slow. I'm gonna kind of fill in somewhat of a sun hit right there on the uh, on the side of that frame. So, and for after. Right now I'm using this kind of peachy color. Uh, let's do a little bit more actually. Let's just go like. There we go. That's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna take this color, turn it to white, and then I'm gonna just go slightly off screen here and just create a little bit more of a, uh, a light hit. Nothing, nothing real intense. You could do this with a uh, radial mask as well, but I'm just using a brush, so. Cool. Well, I, I think I like that. You know what, actually, I'm gonna do something here. Oh, crap. I'm going to do something here um, that I normally don't do, but I'm going to create another uh, dodge layer, go to overlay, and then I'm going to come down here to this road. I'm going to kind of accentuate this road a little bit, so I'm going to create a tiny little, little brush here, and I'm going to just brush along this road just ever so slightly, see if we're even doing anything. Um, just a little bit, let's bump up the opacity just to speed this up oh, 22 yeah there we go because this road is somewhat of a focal point so I would like to try to accentuate it if I can so just brightening it up without being real obvious that this is what we're doing we don't want people looking at a photo and being like oh you made that road brighter so we're just gonna be real subtle with it I think that's probably probably good right there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you can see it enough that I think that's I think that's good. So, okay. We are going to combine all these together. So, I'm clicking this bottom layer, scrolling up, hitting shift, the layer on that top layer, and then I'm hitting command, option, shift, and E. And I'm combining all those together. And now, let's see, what do I want to do? I think I'm actually going to take this into Camera Raw and just do a couple gradient filters real quick. Um, I think we're good on everything else here. So let's do our filter. We'll do a radial gradient and make something real big here. Invert it, zoom out so we see what we're doing. And let's lower that feather. We don't want to do anything real heavy here, but I'm just going to do a slight vignette. Very, very slight. Don't want to do anything real heavy because then it'll look weird. Um, before, after, before, after. That's pretty good. It's not too bad. Maybe increase that feather a little bit because we don't want it to look like that because that looks weird. do a um, slight one on the sky so we'll go we're gonna do a, la a, a linear gradient I'm gonna drop it down I'm actually going to intersect this with the sky so that we're not selecting this mountain at all and then I'm going to just draw my exposure just a little bit I might actually drag that down slightly a bit more Be 
careful because we have a weird little line up here and I don't want to make that too obvious. So, okay, well, before, after, very, very slight adjustment. I'm going to come to uh, my color mixer, just make sure that I have all my colors how I want them. I think that's pretty good right there. Uh, we could bump our oranges just a little bit, maybe bring down the yellows. And I might actually do another little radial gradient here and just warm up this area. So I'm going to pull my feather all the way to 100 and then maybe target this. So just so it hits this area where all that light's coming from and we're just going to hit the temperature just ever so slightly. Don't want anything crazy because we don't want nuclear orange color. Okay, before, after, before, after. I think that's, that's pretty good. Might hit color grading, add a little bit of blue to our shadows. Um, do I like that? I don't know if I do. I don't know if I do or not. Uh, let's just keep it really subtle because we do need a little bit of more a little bit more blue in our, our uh, shadow, but maybe ever so slightly in the uh, mid-tones. Uh, I feel like that's looking messy, actually. Okay, I think that's fine. I think that looks all right. Hmm. Um, you know what? I might actually like this more without that uh that vignette yeah i think i'm gonna delete this uh this radial gradient yeah i think that i think i like that a little bit better so that's one thing to keep in mind it's just just don't be afraid to try things because you can always undo them so yeah i like that better without that uh that gradient on the bottom okay i'm gonna hit okay Okay, so I'm gonna take this layer, duplicate it, and I'm gonna do a little Orin effect. So I have my duplicated layer here. I'm gonna come up to filter. I'm gonna hit blur, Gaussian blur. Um, let's, if we bump this up closer to 40, because we were shooting that with the, the 48 megapixel uh, camera on the drone, we'll hit okay. And I'm gonna come to image adjustments, brightness, contrast. I'm going to jack the contrast up and maybe the brightness too, just a little bit. And then I'm going to come to image, color balance. I'm going to have those glowy highlights be warmer. You don't want to have cool glowy highlights. It doesn't really make sense. Okay. And then I'm going to hit our uh, luminosity mask. I'm going to do lights one. That's gonna hit all my little bright spots. Everything that's white there is where it's targeting. Okay, so now it's real glowy. We're gonna turn our blend mode to soft light. Opacity, I like to keep it around about 35, at least for this style of Gaussian blur. Okay, I like that. We're going to do, we're gonna combine these two. This, uh, we have our camera raw filter layer and our Gaussian blur layer. I'm going to hit command option shift E combine both of those and then I'm going to come up here to filter other. I'm going to do a little high pass filter. Keep it very very subtle. Um, let's yeah, let's keep it at 1.7. I think that's I think that's fine. Maybe we'll go maybe we'll go 2 just because it's smaller details. We'll hit okay. And then we'll do blend mode soft light. Okay, so now I have a much sharper image. Okay, so I think I like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go from my top layer down to my bottom layer. I'm going to shift and I'm going to control click, flatten image. Okay, and then I'm going to hit command W. We're going to hit save and put this back over into Lightroom. Okay, so there we have our final image back into Lightroom. So I think what I'm gonna do, just as a final little touch, is I'm gonna do a little uh, curves adjustment here, just bring those down just a little bit. 
uh, bring up that highlight portion just add a little bit of slight contrast I'm gonna bring up this bottom part this is something that I just like to do um, in all of my photos at the very very end I'll take this curves and I will bring up the bottom of my adjustment up to about up to about four or five and just raise the shadows a little bit so very very slight but okay I I think that's about it so um, I like this a lot let me know what you think uh, if there's something that you would have done better or you know I don't know maybe you would have taken the photo better I really like this I, I think the composition is pretty cool I like that it has this this lit up ridge is kind of a leading line up in the middle of the frame and it's kind of dotted with you know some of these fall colors and these these maple trees that are you know all, all red and orange and, and then you have Mount Tipinogos up here in the background I think it works pretty well um, and I normally don't love having blank skies but I think with this shot a blank sky actually works all right so I I like this a lot but let me know what you think so we're gonna leave that there for today thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe and and leave a like and a comment and let me know your thoughts on this image and uh, if you have any have anything that you would have done different then yeah let me know but in the meantime I hope you have a good day and we'll see you in the next episode bye